I'm Steve Gottlieb. I was in Iran in Shiraz, which is in the middle of the Iranian desert. Um, I taught at the Pahlavi, what was then called Pahlavi University. Uh, from uh, 1960, in 1966 and 67. I, I did a uh, trip out to the uh, Marvdasht Plain with some archaeologists and we stayed in a mud brick schoolhouse and I remember spending about three hours with the, the teacher uh, and, and we stumbled over the Farsi word for governor. And so the conversation, most of the three hours was trying to figure out what I was talking about. <laughs> but it was so sweet. My name is Lynn Russell. I was in Iran from 1965 to 1967, stationed in the town of Bandar Pahlavi on the Caspian coast. We have very fond memories of our students in our night classes, some of whom we kept in touch with for many years, and we hope to promote more peace and understanding between the United States and Iran. My name is George Reed. Um, I trained for Iran. Uh, the training class was in Fresno, California, 1967. And it was a great experience. I actually ended up, I didn't actually go over to Iran. I did finish the training and I became a VISTA volunteer, which is the Domestic Peace Corps. And I was uh, over in the Ozarks, Springfield, Missouri, Ozarks, for two years as a VISTA volunteer. So I have a little bit of both of the experiences, which is so great. But I, I love the Peace Corps training, and I love my two years in VISTA. Um, gr some, some of the best two experiences of my life. So, and I, actually, I'd like to do it again. <laughs> I'd love to do something like this again. We're hoping to find a way to do this again. My name is Mustafa Rahbar. I'm from Iran. Uh, I am from the city of Semnan. It's uh, the provincial capital of the province of Semnan. And it's about 120 miles east of Tehran. Uh, when I was a very young boy, I learned a few words in English. I was the only game in town. So whenever foreigners came through my hometown, there were lots of hippies going through my hometown to go to Afghanistan because my city is on the way to Mashhad and then to Afghanistan. And I just practiced English with them. Hi, how are you doing, mister? You know, and all that. And then people thought that I was a, an English scholar. So, whenever somebody came to town and uh, they needed a translator, they asked me to translate. So I met a Peace Corps volunteer in 1965, I think, and the first one. And we had a vacant house, my father had a vacant house, and he was looking for a place to live, and he rented my house. And from then on, all the Peace Corps volunteers who came to my hometown uh, stayed with my parents and they were my parents, like my parents, children. And I practiced English with them and I learned English and uh, I left my hometown when I was 18. I went to the capital city, Tehran, and uh, got a job at an American State Department outfit called Iran America Society. We had maybe 10,000 students then, and I got a job teaching English, and I had Peace Corps roommates in Tehran until I left in 19, uh, not exactly, but until 1970, um, yeah, 1970, when I left the country and I came to the United States, went to the University of Tennessee, studied journalism and then went back to Iran in 1975, worked as a documentary filmmaker for the Iranian television for two years and then uh, after the revolution I went to my hometown and taught English at this teacher's training college and uh, in 1980, September 1980, 
I left the country for good, came back to the United States with my wife, who is from Knoxville, Tennessee, and we've been living there since. My name is Tom Hoof. Um, I was in Iran from the end of 1968 until 1971, um, and uh, I started in Babulsar, Iran, on the Mazandaran Caspian coast. One of the wonderful things about being in Iran is just their sense of hospitality. And I rented a house from a local townsman who had a very large family who I lived with initially. I then decided that that was a little too much uh, closeness for me and I ended up renting the house next door with a little wall between the two for a little privacy. But whenever I had Peace Corps friends come to visit, um, they insisted on you know being the hosts and the caterers for our dinners, which of course was most welcome. And I still remember when the first time this happened, um, one of my best friends came to visit for the weekend and they said, oh, no, no, we have to prepare this dinner for you and proceeded in front of us to go grab the chicken, cut the chicken's head off, start plucking it and, you know, saying, well, in a half an hour, you'll have your dinner. <laughs> so the kind of the visceral directness of this process was in a way so shocking to an American because you, you don't normally see things like the, you know, one minute the chicken you're about to eat running around the courtyard and the next minute the head's, you know, and the blood's kind of flowing. And there's something about that very direct, that directness of, of life and death and, and food and all of that, that, you know, they just took as normal everyday life. And here, you know, we buy chicken in a package and all the blood's gone and everything's kind of antiseptic, so. Hi, my name's Kendall Dudley. I was in Iran 1967 to 69. I was in Sanandaj, Kurdistan for one year and Tehran for the second year. It was Thanksgiving in Sanandaj and myself and two other volunteers wanted to have a turkey. Well, turkeys are not necessarily available, but it happened to be that there was a man with a dozen turkeys walking down the street in early November and we thought, oh, here's an opportunity to have Thanksgiving turkey. So we bought a turkey and the turkey was not packaged. The, per the turkey had to be fed, in fact, for a, a good number of weeks before actually Thanksgiving. And then what happens to get a turkey into a Thanksgiving turkey you have to do, requires a number of different things to do to it. Like, first of all, kill it. So the second problem is after you've got this bird is to figure out how to cook it because we had tiny little ovens that were about the size of, of cooking a, a dish of pasta. The only place in town that was large enough for the turkey was the cookie factory. So we took the turkey to the cookie factory bakery and they were happy to cook our turkey for us. Well, this cookie factory happened to specialize in walnut cookies. Well, there was this news traveled very fast in the small town that the, the Americans were having a turkey baked in the cookie oven. And pretty soon there were several hundred people swarming around this entrance of the cookie bakery. And out comes the turkey golden brown and smelling like a walnut cookie. <laughs> the taste of it was marvelous. And as we walked down the street to our home, hundreds of Iranians clapped and applauded and cheered us and found out a little bit more about this odd ritual of killing a turkey and then taking it to our local cookie factory and cooking it. 